Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dr. Colin Zhu, and thank you so much for being here with us. This is the Thrive Bites podcast, and welcome to season five. Here we talk about three things, plant-powered living, enhancing emotional resilience, and creating a thriving mindset. And I interview the most passionate guests here, ranging from physicians to coaches to dietitians to entrepreneurs. And my hope is to give you really informative and high-valued conversations. So please Follow us here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you hear your podcasts. Come on in, and I can't wait to see you inside. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to the fourth episode of Thrive Bites Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Colin Zhu, and uh, this episode has been great. Um, I get to interview uh, Dr. Ted Barnett, and uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful conversation. As you will see, we had a, a lot of great laughs. We shared a lot of great stories. And uh, he is the president and founder of Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute um, up in Rochester, New York. Um, and he started that back in 2015. And what's great about this episode is we go into a deeper dive of how he started out as an interventional radiologist, how he became a vegan with his family. Um, and really, you know, evolved, you know, a great CME program in terms of teaching the public as well as healthcare professionals about plant-based nutrition. And he's been, you know, such an early adopter. And uh, now he's been leading uh, since the pandemic, um, you know, all virtual jumpstart programs into plant-based nutrition. And this is a 15-day program. Um, and we're going to go a deeper dive into what that is, what that entails, and uh, what is it mean you know, to implement uh, plant-based nutrition into your own life and welcoming um, people from all walks of life as well as healthcare professionals. So we have a lot of great stories um, you know, for this episode, and I can't wait for you to dive deep. So uh, here's to the next episode, and I'll see you soon. Okay, guys. Well, welcome to another episode of Thrive Bites. I'm your host, Dr. Colin Zhu, and thank you so much for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, and you've chosen a few moments out of your busy day to join us with us today. And um, I have an awesome, awesome, awesome guest. Um, I cannot wait uh, to share uh, with you guys. Um, and uh, his name is Dr. Ted Barnett, and he is known as the high-tech doctor with low-tech solutions. Um, he is an interven uh, interventional radiologist by trade, a mammographer, a body imager, and a senior partner with board and eyed imaging in Rochester, New York. And uh, he's been practicing there since 1986, um, and he's also the president and board chair of Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute, where he founded um, in 2015. And uh, him and his wife, Carol, are the parents of three adult children who are incredibly healthy, lifelong vegans. They have also been coordinators of the Rochester Area uh, Vegan Society since 1995. And he is a fellow and former board member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And he's very dedicated in transforming the practice of medicine using the principles of lifestyle medicine and plant-based nutrition. So without further ado, please welcome Dr. Ted. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. Hello, Dr. Shu. And uh, it's thank you so you. much. Thank yeah, you so sure. much for being here on the show with us. Um, you know, I know you're a super busy guy, very, very popular. Um, and uh, I can't wait to share what you and you're about. How are you and where are you calling from? So I'm uh, at work. I, uh, uh, because of the way we scheduled this, I just uh, thought I would just stay, stay in my office at work. And um, I'm so excited to be able to talk to you. I'm in Rochester, New York, and uh, in Western New York. And um, you know, I just, uh, it's just good to see you. I know I got to see you a little bit recently because you were participating in one of our 15 day whole food plant based jumpstarts. So, and I know you're part of uh, Plant Based Telehealth, which I think is an incredible organization. Very exciting what you guys are doing. Thank you. So. Thank you so much for, um, you know, um, iterating that. And uh, yeah, it's always nice. Um, I think that because of the circles, um, you know, both live and virtually, um, it's almost like, you know, how would you, how would you cross paths with people, you know, if you don't actually put yourself out there and, um, you know, that's how you find people. So, you know, we're very happy, you know, to, you know, know each other both, you know, personally and professionally now. So it's really, really nice. So, yeah, no, it's really fun. Um, so we're going to go straight into it. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to kind of go into, you know, the jumpstart program and everything, what you're about. 
But here, um, I would like to kind of go into your origin story. And um, I like to know people's, um, you know, how they got from A to B and how they come up, you know, kind of, uh, you know, come about. And what's interesting about you is that you started and trained as a interventional radiologist. And uh, I would love to, you know, uh, for you to share your background in terms of, you know, how did you, you know, how did you start? What was that, you know? life like i know you're at work you're still doing that it seems like and how did you eventually create you know the rochester um you know uh you know uh, lifestyle medicine institute sure so uh, before i get into the whole origin story let me just explain to people what uh, an interventional radiologist is because most people don't have any idea what that that is my mother never understood it um so <laughs> <laughs> so people have heard of radiology and you know it's diagnostic imaging you actually can see behind me there's a cat scan I read CAT scans, I read ultrasounds, uh, and I do mammograms, all that kind of stuff. And um, so it's, it's, it's imaging, but the interventional part is we do image-guided procedures. And we're not just observing, we're actually doing the procedures. So I do angiograms, I pass the catheters, I do angioplasties, I open up arteries and fix them that way. Um, and I do a lot of biopsies, so I use ultrasound to guide needles into you know, uh, various organs and um, the, the sample tissues. And that's that's the high tech aspect of what I do. I mean, we put in even the cava filters and sometimes we lice clots in people's legs or in their lungs. And so there's a lot of high tech stuff and I love that. I love that, honestly. And I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, but I'll just give you my background because I think it actually has to do with my, uh, how I grew up. And I grew up uh, in Connecticut on Long Island Sound. Uh, I spent a lot of time out in nature on the uh, on the water and boats and, um, and so I actually joined the Sierra Club when I was 18, and I've been a member of the Sierra Club ever since. And um, so my wife and I got married when we were in our early 30s, and we moved to Rochester, New York. And she was very interested in uh, becoming a vegetarian because of the animals. And I honestly wasn't all that interested, uh, but I started to look into it a little bit about uh, the, a little bit about. Um, the environmental aspects of, of changing your diet to a more plant-based diet. We didn't use the term plant-based. We used the term vegetarian and vegan was coming into vogue at that time. Um, and I learned that it's really, really important for humans if we're going to survive on this planet to treat it a lot better. And one of the ways you can treat it a lot better is by not consuming animal products. The, the consumption of animal products is kind of behind almost all of the uh, um, environmental ills that we see today. And it's well, the beauty of it is it, it doesn't require any new rules or any laws. We can just all do it on our own. We don't have to go, we don't have to buy a Prius. We don't have to change our light bulbs. We could just change what we eat. And not that I have anything against a Prius. I mean, I own an electric car, um, but you don't have to make um, these, these kinds of changes. So this was back in 1990 or 1989. We were just starting a family. And uh, I said, you know, I think this is a great idea, but it sounds dangerous because my parents are really smart people and they would have, would not have fed me all these animal products and dairy and meat and fish and clams and all that stuff if it was not good for me. So I said, okay, I'm going to study this. I'm going to investigate it. And I'm going to set a really low bar. All it has to be, the diet just can't be worse than the diet I'm eating now, right? In terms of safety and health. So I did some research and I thought, wow, it's not just the same. It's way safer, way better, way healthier, in addition to being good for the environment. So then I read the work of Dr. Dean Ornish uh, back in 1990. And in 1991, actually, along with um, Michael Greger, who we weren't friends yet, but we're friends now, uh, but he had the same reaction. He said, wow, after I've read the work of Dr. Dean Ornish, showing that with lifestyle and diet changes, you can uh, basically treat and even reverse the number one killer of men and women in this country, then the game's over. Everyone's going to get this. We're going to stop having heart disease. Of course, that didn't mm -hmm. happen, but I did make the change and we made our change with our kids then. We had two little girls, uh, born uh, born in 89 and 87, and our son was born in 92. Our son's been vegan since before birth. We became vegan, and we actually did the healthy vegan version. I basically was on the low-fat kind of um, Dean Ornish type diet. Uh, Dean Ornish did allow, at the time, did allow a little um, egg white and, and um, non-fat dairy, but we didn't, we didn't use that because we went totally vegan. So that's the beginning of that. Uh, I was actively doing interventional radiology, fixing people's arteries, and beginning to realize that, wow, this doesn't make a lot of sense. If I can get people to change their diet, um, maybe they don't need my 
balloon angio. Right? <laughs> so did you? So that's very interesting. So um, you know, as you start started slowly adopting, and um, you know, your family was evolving. You know, your whole dynamic was evolving. You know, did that slowly filter into your direct practice of interventional radiology? Like how? Like did you start? you know, like on the side, you know, just like, you know, because they're on the table, they have anesthesia, right? Like can't really like, you know, talk to, so, but you know, where, how did you play that into, I'm guessing this was way before you created the Institute. Oh, sure. Yeah. This, so we didn't create the Institute till 2015. Uh, I didn't start teaching like to the public until 2012. Um, mm -hmm. So actually my wife and I did take, so 1991 is when we made the change. 1995, actually, we were appointed the, uh, coordinators of the Rochester Area Vegan Society. It's a very successful, uh, large vegan society, uh, and it, which had started in 1989. So it was already six years old, and we thought it was old then, right? Uh, now, we've been running it now for over, you know, what, 27 years? <laughs> now it seems wow. really, yeah, it's 30, we're in our 33rd year. Uh, and so I didn't, I, was, I wasn't particularly comfortable talking to patients about it. Mm. Um, I wasn't really sure how to go about this. Um, you know, I, I was afraid of what the other doctors would say that, to me mm. about what I was saying to their patients. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm obviously much more confident about that now, but in looking back, and of course, it's always hard to remember what your, what your thought processes were a long time ago, yeah. but I didn't say a whole lot. I had to get into some conversations, I remember, and I always talked to people about smoking. Mm -hmm. and, you know, usually doctors would say, look, I can't even get my patients to quit smoking. How am I going to change their diet? Mm. You know, you'd have that kind of reaction. And so I didn't spend a whole lot of you know, doing that, uh, talking about it, but gradually I did, you know, till the, maybe the, you know, the, the 2000, early 2000s, I was maybe talking a little bit more about it, but yeah, yeah. But being, being that, you know, it's not just you, but your entire family, you know, were, you know, mostly vegetarian or vegan, you know, in a way, did people, you know, see that as like, you know, look up to you as a role model. So even though you didn't, you know, verbalize as much at the time, you didn't teach and educate, you know, did, people look up to you and be like, wow, you know, Dr. Ted is actually, you know, living this kind of lifestyle. You know, why don't I just give that a try? So we did have that. I did have an experience of Fairman. I, I, uh, I'm up in Rochester now, but I uh, was the chief of radiology at a uh, sort of small to medium sized hospital in the Finger Lakes in, in uh, Western New York. And back then before all x-rays and radiology imaging was on, uh, was all digital. It was on film. And so every doctor in the hospital had to come through my office at least once a day to go over their studies with me. They couldn't view it in their office. They had to, oh. Right. They had to get to walk into my office. You know, it was like radiology rounds. It was so sociable. I mean, things have really changed. Oh, you know, man. Maybe hard for you to, you know, I, I used to refer to my office as the nerve center of the hospital. Because right? <laughs> I, I was watching, you know, I could see what's going on all over the hospital, you know, yeah. various the ICU, I was looking at this, you know, ch this chest. Like, like, how do you get interaction otherwise? You know, like you have a physician's round, uh, right. a physician's lounge, right? right? And then what What other, I don't know. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, so the radio, so so radiologist office was kind of, to me, the, the you know, the nerve center of the hospital. And, and yeah. I would see doctors all day long and they knew what I was up to. And they would look into my lunchbox and say, <laughs> you know, well, what is it today? Yeah. And Ted, and oh my God, how can you eat that stuff? And and I actually it was interesting because slowly, one by one, a few of the doctors did make the change mm -hmm. of becoming um, vegan. Actually, mm -hmm. and um, they uh, oftentimes were the ones who were giving me the hardest time because mm -hmm. there's an argument going on in people's heads, right? Like, is this if this is true and this is right, then why am I not already doing this? What's going on here? So there's this, you know, this kind of argument. You sort of step back. Kind of, I, I refer to it sort of as a jujitsu maneuver. You know, just let them. You don't have to fight it. Just let them. <laughs> Pat, path of least resistance. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So actually, I'm very proud of the fact. I don't know if you've heard of Carrie Graff, but she's uh, pretty pretty well known in the Rochester area as a lifestyle medicine physician. She co-authored a book on called the um, uh, the Four Leaf Plan, uh, and um, so she arrived in 1999. I was there until 2006. I think she arrived around 1999. She thought I was crazy. She referred to me as a tree hugger, right? And but she was just fresh out of family practice residency. Yeah. And she was having her own health issues. Yeah. And one day she decided to try to try it, and her health issues all cleared up. I won't go into all the details. Yeah, yeah. She can share that. 
Well, she does share it actually publicly. So, but but I, I won't. Uh, and now she is one. I mean, she's one of our biggest advocates. She actually yeah. is the head of lifestyle medicine at Rochester mm -hmm. Regional Health. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. You know, um, it's amazing how those ripples go out, right? It really does. It really does. And that's what I love about you know lifestyle medicine. And it's so cool that you know you founded Dean Ornish's work, which you know we consider is like one of the you know uh, foremost pioneers, including Gregor. Um, you know, and so many, you know, um, other people. Um, and, you know, my, when, when I first learned about it and haven't heard about Ornish's work in the Lancet in 1990, I just said to myself, how come this is not like headline news? You know, I mean, I don't know if you can share, you know, your experience during that time, you know, did it make any type of splash at all? Like, you know, that's a really great question. Uh, I think people knew about it. Um, you know, I, at one point, I mean, I, it's at one point in Ornish has been on the cover of Time magazine and Newsweek, right? But yeah. I considerably later probably than that. Yeah, yeah. We used it as evidence, you know, when we were talking to our friends in the vegan society. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think that it would make more impact, you know, but obviously a scientific publication doesn't have as much magnitude as much as like popular, you right. know, you know, media nowadays. And now we have social media. So so let's uh, move on a little bit, you know, fast, uh, fast forward me to, um, you know, when, you know, the the whole your, your baby, you know, I know you have children. I'm sure, you know, Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute is like, you know, you're 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 un, you're, you're another child. You know, how how did that, you know, come into you know, fruition, you know, why, what was the mission behind it? Is it still the mission? And, you know, what was the whole point of its creation? Wow. Interesting. So, you know, slowly uh, in the nineties, I started to gain confidence about what I was doing. Interestingly enough, we started going to uh, the North American Vegetarian Society annual Summerfest in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. when our son was about two or three. So probably around 1994, 1995, we started going there. And that's when I was actually able to meet so many of the giants in this. So, you know, I met Michael Greger when he was just a kid. I mean, he used to go to the kids center and let the kids paint them and stick feathers on them and, stuff <laughs> and leaves. And it was, yeah, pretty amazing. Maybe not feathers because that would have been vegan, but they were sticking things on him and painting him. He was just, yeah, it was great. Um, he's calmed down quite a bit since then, but he's, you know, obviously an eccentric, as we all know, and that's what we love about Michael, right? But I also met Neil Barnard there and Caldwell yeah. Esselstyn and uh, Colin Campbell and, gosh, so many of the big names would, would go there. And I didn't know, well, we didn't, none of us knew we were going to be famous, right? Maybe maybe Neil Barnard didn't, knew, knew he was going to be famous because he was already famous. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know. He's I'll, been in it for so long. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, you know, just all the other ones like Garth Davis and, Brenda Davis, no, they're not related, but, um, and I'm sure I'm leaving people out, but we got to know people at these, at the Summerfest, and we would just sit down and break bread with them because there'd be, you know, in the cafeteria together. And so all the sort of informal uh, uh, acquaintances also got, we also got to watch their, uh, their sessions that, that you'd, you'd go to their, their, their uh, lectures and presentations and see the formal presentations, but we just all got to know each other. And I actually look, uh, think back, think that when the history of this movement is all written, that Vegetarian Summerfest is going to play a big role in that, just in terms of how people got to get to know each other. Um, so I sort of gained confidence in this. I started to give grand rounds at my own hospital, um, I mostly about diet, but I also gave the first lecture on prions and, you know, mad cow disease because mm. partly because of Michael Greger, because he was talking about it so much. And then I went and studied up on prions and, you know, um, you know, Stanley Prusner, the guy who theorized that I, um, he ended up getting the Nobel prize. So mm. that was like the first lecture, the first grand rounds I ever gave the guy get, got the Nobel prize for it later. But anyway, uh, and for people who don't know about prions, that's a whole nother story, but that's what, mm -hmm. where mad cow disease comes from anyway. In 2012 is when I consolidated my Grand Rounds lectures and then added a whole bunch and actually put together a six-week course, mm -hmm, which we mm -hmm. taught at the local JCC. It was called A Plant-Based Diet, Eating for Happiness and Health. And we had a lot of people come to, to that. And within a year or two, I got it accredited through the uh, Rochester Academy of Medicine in Rochester and, and also the University of Rochester Medical Center and uh, kind of went back and forth between the two. But we had it accredited so doctors and other health professionals could take it for credit. And mm -hmm. that was starting in 2012. And we gave it 20 times to almost 900 people. Mm -hmm. About 15% of them took it for credit. And we, um, the last time we gave it was in January 2020, which is the, when the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. And we had kind of developed a habit of giving it at least twice a year at that point. Well, mm -hmm. we haven't given it since then. 
we recorded it and put it online. It's the still CME accredited and it's on our website now, Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute. And, um, but that doing that is kind of what gave me the confidence to be able to answer questions. Plus watching all these greats at Summerfest, answering the same questions over and over or hearing yeah. them twists and saying, well, how would Dr. Esselstyn answer this question? Or mm -hmm. how would Dr. Barnard respond to this? And eventually you kind of incorporate. I think that's, it's so great to observe other people doing this. And you realize, of course. Of course, right? I'm sure you've done the same thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, you, you um, uh, none of it is, you know, as we say, none of it is rocket surgery. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> or is yeah, it exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's a lot of fun, you know? I mean, you know, obviously they are just like, wealth and wells of information and uh, clinical experience, but there is always a, a certain nuance. You know, I've been humbled to, you know, watch, you know, Essie, um, Dr. Esselstyn, um, you know, Ornish a couple of times, uh, Gregor four or five times, you know, I've, I saw your, your presentation uh, when we had live uh, American College Lifestyle Medicine Conference, maybe like I would, I want to say like three, three, four years ago. Um, okay. you know, I forget the location we were at, but I remember, you That's know, great. you presenting. Sure. Yeah, it was really, it was, it was fun times. And, um, I, I take, you know, I take note of that. This was way before I started doing podcasting, um, okay. and before I started public speaking. So, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to learn from your peers, these people and mentors that you look up to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's such great information, but as well as you have probably experienced, you know, people receive, you know, information very differently, you know, like it, it'll either be like a certain nuance or how you come across, you know, like the energy you put out there or how you package the information. So it's nice to be able to see a whole catalog of different kinds of speakers. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I used to joke with my wife because I've been going to these plant-based uh, conferences since, since probably 2012 or 2013. The very first one was a plantrician, which mm -hmm. was basically preceded my going to ACLM meetings. And, um, you know, after a while, I would joke with my wife. I was like, well, what do you think they're going to say? You think plants are good for you? <laughs> 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 <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so basically, you were teaching this, you know, twice a year. So it sounds like biannually, six-week yeah. CME course. Right. And so the pandemic happened, right? And then what did you guys do um, after that? Sure. So, well, 2015 is when we actually started Rochester Lifestyle Medicine. Mm -hmm. And it was one organization at the time. It was actually a medical practice uh, so that we could do medically supervised CHIP programs. So CHIP mm -hmm. is the Complete Health Improvement Program. It's kind of the granddaddy of uh, of all these lifestyle medicine programs. It's been around since the 90s. There's 40 or 50 or 60 papers about it now. So it's well, you know, well, well studied and published. Uh, and um, we decided we were going to run it in a way that we could actually end up billing it as a medical visit because, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in, until you can make these things practical, meaning meaning you can pay your staff and, and keep the lights on in your office, yeah, it's not going to happen, right? Yeah. So this is back in 2015. I used to meet with the insurance companies, and it, we were, it was really like pulling teeth. It was really a struggle. Oh, yeah. Right. But we learned a lot, and we learned a lot by mm -hmm. running programs. And um, we started our nonprofit that the Institute in 2017, although really I, the, the origin of the whole thing is 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, although now we basically focus entirely on the Institute, we, the nonprofit. We don't do the medical practice anymore, mainly because with the pandemic, we decided it really didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, but we developed our own. CHIP is wonderful, but it's really kind of a, it's relatively long. It, it's 18 or 20 sessions, depending on how you run it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to get people to sign up for it. I used to mm -hmm. tell Still tell people this chip is like getting kids into a bath you can't get them in and then you can't get them out <laughs> once they do it they love it right yeah but i said you know we need to come up with our, a program if there was already a program out there i wouldn't wouldn't have had them invent my own but we invent our own program that's just really short that what's the what's the minimum we can do where people can say hey, look i can do this i'm a grown-up i can do anything for two weeks and i knew from various i mean honestly i knew from like watching um Plant Pure Nation, you know, they had their five day jump start. People get amazing changes in a really short period of time. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So I said, well, let's do our own. And so we designed our own jump start. My wife is, uh, you know, a great educator. So we put together all the, the materials. 
And this is when we were still alive. We, uh, and we, because we have a lot of contacts, we actually had over 20 people show up in our office on the first day. And we did it three Saturdays. That's what we came up with 15 days for very scientific reasons. It begins and ends on the same day of the week. So we could do three Saturdays in our office and we had finger stick machines. So we could do mm. point of care and give people their labs. So they would show up on the first Saturday morning. We had two assembly lines of getting, giving people their labs. Then they would walk into, we had a big classroom and they'd go into the classroom and uh, they all this educational materials strewn all over the these tables that we had. We since, uh, after that, we learned to put it all into a booklet. So, but they just had a folder at first. And so the first time we didn't know, we, so we actually ended up having our booklet. About the third or fourth time we gave it, we had the book. You're like, actually. organization? What is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we didn't know if it was going to work. But the thing yeah. is, the first time we did it, we had amazing results. I love right? it. I love you know? it. And so There's we said, nothing better than having, you know, your first outcomes, you know, be so positive. Right. And we kind of knew if they would follow our instructions, it would probably work. But, you know, it was like the best day of my life because day 15, you'd be sitting there across from the patient. And I was doing the finger sticks myself, uh, yeah. half the patients. And I would look at the machine, which takes like three minutes to cook. And you'd be talking to me and say, hey, you know, your cholesterol just dropped 70 points. Really? Wow. You know, you know, amazing. And, and my blood, your blood sugar is normal now. So, I mean, going forward, now we, we ran it monthly, which was really cool because we did this something called um, rapid cycle, uh, what's it, uh, PDSA, um, it's, which is a plan, do, study, act, which is short cycle improvement. Right. So you, every month we could uh, analyze how, what happened last month and how we could have done better and how our teaching could have done better. So we were able mm. to like within a year, we had done it 12 times. Mm. So we got pretty good at it. And, you know, we used. Right. So, yeah, it's been fascinating. And then, of course, the uh, pandemic came along and we pivoted. But that's a whole nother story. Hey guys, what's going on? It's uh, Dr. Colin Zhu, aka the Chef Doc, and you know I'm so glad, um, you know, to uh, you know announce this special announcement. I'm going to be partnering with uh, Chef AJ and uh, amongst several, several amazing experts, and we are. Uh, collaborating and coming together for the ultimate weight loss bundle and what this is is basically a collection of a massive massive amount of information over a hundred ebooks um, over a thousand uh, recipes and this is you know in total to be estimated around forty six hundred dollars and you're actually going to get this for forty nine dollars and uh, yes you did not hear that incorrectly you're going to get this entire bundle and um for those of you guys don't know you know chef aj is a wonderful wonderful um you know a vegan uh chef and uh, she's amazing. I've had her, you know, on my podcast. She's been on the Rich Roll podcast, and she's an amazing human being. And um, very, very inspired to, you know, work with her um, on this ultimate weight loss bundle, amongst several others like Dr. Stephen Esser, uh, Dr. John McDougal, um, one of the co-authors, uh, Robert Cheek from Plant Based uh, Athlete. Um, and several others. Um, I'm going to be uh, for the next couple of days. I'm going to, uh, you know, talk to uh, some of my friends and colleagues about it. And who this bundle is for is basically anyone seeking a more uh, healthy and more natural, sustainable weight loss um, uh, lifestyle um, by eating more low-fat uh, plant-based. And uh, like I said, um, over a thousand recipes um, from workbooks to courses. Um, I have my stuff there um, amongst uh, other friends as well. You're going to get all this for $49. And this bundle is happening one time only and uh, it's going to end March 2nd, 2002 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So definitely check out the link in the bio and definitely check out the link um, wherever I'm sharing this video. So uh, definitely share it with as many people as possible. You're gonna get $4,600 worth of value um, in $49 and that's a only one-time payment. It's only happening once a year. So definitely check it out and I'll see you guys inside. You know, you moved everything online, right? Because I've, you know, having participated myself, you know, you, you know, had the finger sticks, you guys had actual, you know, live cooking demonstrations, right? right? And it's very thorough, 
right? It's a really nice breakdown, you know, for those that have, ha- that have done it before in the past um, or viewing it because, you know, you're showing videos again. It's a nice breakdown of all the different recipes that you share, you know, with the uh, participants. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's nice. What How I felt about it was I felt very supported. I felt, you know, there's, you know, a forum, right? Uh, you guys currently use uh, a, a, a Google. Google Classroom. Yeah, Google and um, I just, and there's an email. You're part of this, you know, email uh, newsletter. You're part of this uh, list and you're always being updated, right? And I felt that, you know, there was a question. There was always going to be some sort of person or some sort of resource that's coming your way. Hmm. And I, I, I can't tell you as a family, you know, as trained, you know, family practice and having done primary care in the past, I can't tell you how how awesome that is because mm-hmm. you know whenever someone goes to a primary care physician and as much as I try my best to do one on one because I did a lot of outpatient you know work mm-hmm. and as much as I try my best you know to you know leverage the time that I have because healthcare very gives you very limited time to teach you mm-hmm. know um, you know they can only get so much information they go back home. And where do they go? What are they left with? Right. right. Is there anyone there to um, hold their hand and to follow up? Um, so it's very, you know, it's kind of like us professionals. You go to a conference, you know, you're excited about it. And then you go home. It's like, you know, do you retain it? You know, do you follow up? Mm-hmm. So you have you guys have definitely thought it out. You obviously had many, many different um you know, iterations, you've, you know, done it so many times and you fine tune it so well, but I just want to let you know, if no one else has told you that, you know, at, from a primary care um, a perspective, it's just so awesome, you know, and you're able to do it in two, you know, 15 days. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like, that's not a huge ask, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. It's not a huge ask. So it's, mm-hmm. it's truly amazing. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you were able to participate. And uh, yeah, it's been fun having other doctors in the group as well. I mean, uh, well, well. so, you know, Elizabeth Fontaine, who's also a part of plant-based telehealth, has joined us. And I think Nikki Davis has been there. And yeah, so, um, but, and we've had other physicians from around the country join us. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, mm-hmm. it, 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 it really is interesting. That actually, having doctors go through it, especially doctors who aren't aware of the power of it, or are not really convinced, has been really enlightening as well. Because mm-hmm. they go through and they say, you know, because doctors get sick too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they all get, a lot of them get chronic illness. And so it's interesting for them to see how they. Uh, yeah. What are the most uh, common like feedbacks, um, you know, you would get from a, a um, you know, a, a client, you know, versus a healthcare professional? What do they typically say after finishing the program? So interesting. Um, well, from a client, from the participant's point of view, and, and actually we, I think of everybody as a participant, but um, m- most of them are there because they have some variation of, of metabolic syndrome. So, you know, obesity, heart disease, uh, diabetes, um, hypertension, something along those lines. And so they'll say, gee, you know, the thing that they most focus in on usually is cholesterol because that's a great number to measure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, they'll, you know, they'll say, wow, I, it's great that my cholesterol dropped like that, but I did not expect my joints would all feel better. Mm. So so many people who say, gee, my heartburn, I wasn't expecting that. My heartburn went away. Uh, my joints feel better. In fact, some people say, I didn't even realize how much my joints hurt. Until they start coming out of bed in the morning and say, wow, I have all this energy. Um, and uh, skin clears up. People say, gee, I have had these scaly patches. They went away. Um, I'm sleeping better. I have more energy. So all these things that are a little more subjective, that are harder to quantify, mm-hmm. uh, seem to be the kind of thing that they focus on. Because obviously, what, what really matters is how do you feel? Right? Oh, yeah. It's great that your cholesterol dropped, but do you feel Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we love those numbers. And I think patients really get excited about the numbers, too. But it's really important if people feel better. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, you know, as a a, as a primary care, you know, with that continuity of care, you're always having them back for something. right? Right. And so for for us to kind of hear that you know, in a traditional way, it's like, oh, Mr. Smith, you're not feeling it better. Let us adjust this and let's adjust yeah. that. And, you know, to create a program, you know, two weeks and have, you know, for the most part, sounds like a lot of dramatic, you know, uh, effects um, and things that they didn't, you know, expect that it just shows how much of a chronic disease burden that we live in where to the point where, you know, ailments just feel like normal to them. You know, I, I think, I just think it's very, very, in one regards, very sad, but also very, um, 
it's uplifting at the same time because now you have like a great tool in your toolbox to be mm. able to, you know, should you continue, right? Because in a way your program, you know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of like, you know, a trailer to a movie, right? It's not, it's not the end game. You know, you have to, lifestyle medicine is, is at the, at the end of the day, it's all about changing core behavior and lifestyle, you know, uh, modifications. So it's always, it's a constant practice. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we refer to it as uh, staying on the path and we mm -hmm. do have a, you know, alumni program that is getting, it's all already underway and it's really becoming much more expansive, our alumni program. So, uh, we're expanding on that, but we've, of course, we always, when people finish on the fifth, day 15, they say, now what? And we say, well, you can do our CHIP program. And a lot of people do sign up for CHIP. And mm -hmm. then there's this other, which is, um, you know, certified by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, and then there's also the LIFT project, which we love. It's a 10 week program that has a minimal commitment. It's only an hour a week. Uh, and that we love the LIFT project, you know, with Darren Morton created that. And that's also certified by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And then just to toot my own horn here, our, our program also is now certified by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. We got certified last November because we you know, satisfied their um, requirements. And uh, so I like to say that, you know, the, of the, of the programs in the English speaking world, there's three of us. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And I talk, I talk about, you know, ACLM, you know, a lot, but for those of you that know, you know, it started out, um, I believe in 2003, you know, um, and it's basically an academic college that promotes, you know, evidence-based lifestyle uh, medicine uh, approaches to prevent, treat, and reverse um, these types of diseases that we all face in one, one way or another. So it's a big deal, um, you know, to be able to accredit um, a program or satisfy, uh, certify a program. And it wasn't that that wasn't the entire case, you know, th their ability to do that was just relatively recent. Mm -hmm. um, so to kind of have that stamp of approval, you know, it's really, really nice. And, mm -hmm. you know, the board certification, you and I, you yeah. know, I was looking through your resume, we both uh, got boarded at the same time in 2017. Oh, you yeah, yeah, I did it with Gregor. Gregor sat, <laughs> sat right next to me. He was wearing, he was wearing, um, I was wearing like, a, I was very casual that day. I had yeah. like um, a, a, a hoodie on and he had, um, you know how he wears like, um, vegetables on 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 his uh on his sweatshirt he had a big broccoli head okay. you know on his sweatshirt so i took a picture with him uh, um but now you know the now the boards have gone international so right. it just speaks to how important the message is and mm -hmm. i'm really really glad that you know you have done your part and you've been in it for so long and mm -hmm. you know this late latest latest iteration and as you continue to evolve is such a great you know contribution so i really you know appreciate uh you and your team because i know there's a lot of background people that's working um uh in the in the background um so much you know you guys do such a great job oh thank you i really appreciate that and i'm glad you uh, mentioned AC aclm the american college of lifestyle medicine just a great organization uh and when i look at the growth so when i joined officially joined aclm it was somewhere around 2010 i think i always kind of forget but anyway we had 130 members mm. 100 there's now seven thousand members <laughs> <laughs> And growing. I mean, it's, right? it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Like like because this. it just makes sense. You know, I, sure. I kind of think of it as, you know, it just makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 I, I haven't really felt an organization where you feel so much like personal accountability mm -hmm. and so much role modeling that you have to do because it's mm -hmm. like, you can't, how can you walk, how can you not walk the talk or practice what you preach by, you know, really diving deep? I think it's really diving deeper. And as a professional, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it really, you hold yourself accountable. You hold yourself to the light and be like, you know, I can't go on and do this, do this type of message for my patients if I don't do it myself. So I, I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, it's there, there's sort of these, there's four basic um, conferences every year that I love that are all plant-based. There's the PPOD, plant-based mm -hmm. prevention of disease. There's ACLM, mm -hmm. there's the PCRM conference, which is, um, you know, the international uh, uh, this, uh, conference on nutrition and medicine. Yes. Mm -hmm. medicine, right. And then, Bernard, yeah. right. And then there's plantrition, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, um, what, what I, what I found so exciting the first time I went to those, one of those, which I think was plantrition is the emotion and how excited mm -hmm. people get. There's cheering, you know, people mm -hmm. come up on the, on the, on the, le the letter and they get standing ovations and there's mm -hmm. laughter and then there's laughter. <laughs> right, right. 
And, and, exactly, and I've been a radiologist. For those that have never been to a medical conference, right, laughter exactly. is like very rare. That's right. Exactly. Right. Right. And thank you for pointing that out. And 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 so the first time I was a plantrician, this was in Naples, Florida. It was a beautiful conference. This guy, Phil Tuso, is a, uh, a nephrologist in California uh, with um, Kaiser. He gets up there and he talks for, you know, for close to an hour about how dramatic it has been for him to be able to teach his chronic kidney disease patients about plant-based nutrition and how so many of them are getting, getting better, or at least stabilizing. And at the end of his lecture, he started to weep. He was crying. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I've been to a lot of radiology conferences and I have not once seen a radiologist cry at the lectern. <laughs> so, right? Yeah. I mean, because because it, it's, um, you know, food is, you know, food is medicine, food as medicine, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know, I think of it as you can't separate the physical from the emotional from the mental, right. you know, and traditionally, we've thought about it as separate entities. And to me, it's like, how can you because they're all housed under one body, you mm -hmm. know, what I'm saying so, you know, for him, I'm sure he probably has taken on plant based nutrition and noticed the effects to the point where it's so dramatic that it causes you know, such an emotion. So I'm not surprised that happened. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, it was, it was very exciting. That's when I knew something was, something was different that we were part of a, a movement actually. Yeah. 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 Um, so we're going to come to a close last two questions I have for you um, is um, what seems to be the most common, um, you know, having done the jump starts and the CMEs and all that for so long, what are the most common barriers when you're trying to implement plant-based, um, you know, uh, nutrition, um, and the actual structure of the how to's right into someone's own kitchen. Uh, what are the most common barriers that most people, you know, come up with excuses for and, and, and how have you broken those down? Okay. So you're referring to the individuals, the participants now, the participants, right. They say, you know, Dr. Ted, you know, I, you know, when I go home, I kind of feel like, you know, I don't have enough time or it's too expensive or, you know, I don't have this equipment, you know, how, how have you broken those down for them? Yeah. So it's usually social, it's usually social support. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. um, humans are social animals. We tend to do things uh, the same way people around us are, are doing them. And, and it's, uh, you know, nobody likes to be the, you know, swimming upstream. It's just, it's hard. So uh, that's often one of the biggest issues is just social, uh, the social issues. There's also people who don't, you know, just can't cook and they live in food mm -hmm. deserts. But I would say mostly it's because they don't know how to cook. They, and their family is not supporting them. Mm -hmm. so that's one of the beauties of our jumpstart is now, you know, when we had to do the pivot and go to, to Zoom, in a lot of ways, we ended up with more social support for our mm. participants because we're meeting instead of three three times, we're meeting seven times, mm -hmm. all within these fifteen or actually eighteen days because we have a day minus three to get ready. Um, but these people get attached to each other; they become very friendly and they're cheering each other. So there's that support, and also I think having the forum. You know, we use the Google Classroom. Uh, mm -hmm. which is a forum. We also have a closed Facebook group, but a lot of people don't like Facebook. So we're figuring out ways to move away from that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really, the, it's, it's, there's just a lot of different reasons. Plus there's also just inertia, right? Mm. They've never done it before. And yeah, the inertia is huge. I, yeah. I, I visualize it as if it's like a huge boulder on top of a hill, mm -hmm. but once you're able, it, it's so hard to move. Right. So, but once you're able you know, the momentum going downhill is just so key, you know, and I, you, like I said, you provide all the support, you know, mm -hmm. because you've done it for so long, you know, all the, all the gaps that people fall mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I know we've heard, we've heard just about every, uh, you know, I don't want to say excuse, but every reason it's not, you know, that uh, you can imagine that this won't work. Although usually there's a new one every month. But, uh, <laughs> you're like, oh, I haven't heard of that one before. Exactly. So we got to write that down. But it's just, so, it's such a joy to to be able to work with people on that. I have to say. That is awesome. That is really, really great to hear. Um, so my last question, I love asking this to all my guests is, you know, part of Thrive Bites, you know, the, our podcast, um, our theme is creating a thriving, you know, um, mm -hmm. mindset. And so I would like to know, what are three things that you do in your personal life that has helped you thrive, you know, in your own life? Because, you know, from the time that I've known you, you have such great energy. You're very positive. You encourage others and support others. How, you know, what were the ingredients for you, you know, you know, that you've practiced over time to get to that point? Yeah, good question. Uh, well, 
you know, in our busy lives, we're always like having to like give up things and ratchet, you know, certain habits are just really hard to maintain. But the one thing that I always maintain is I always exercise. Mm. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, I usually run outdoors whenever possible, even in the winter. Uh, you know, it's harder when it's dark. And, but, uh, you know, my wife will tell you that, you know, I get kind of cranky if I'm not, if I miss a run. Uh, <laughs> you should go outside, I need to run. Um, and so that's really important to me is, uh, and um, I try to run, you know, three to five miles every day. Now, obviously, that doesn't happen every day. That's my goal, though. And it, I usually I would say it's five, at least five times a week. Um, I One of Barnett's rules, though, is get out of breath every day. So mm. if you're stuck in a building, your office building or whatever it is, and you can't exercise that day. Just run up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. I did that today, actually. I did it for eight minutes. I, you know, did the stairs six, you know, and you're out of breath if you're doing it fast, right? Oh, yeah. I right? mean, there's stairs. So. There's stairs. <laughs> And that's actually the other thing is make sure you get out of breath because a lot of people, I think walking is great. I love it when people tell me that they're walking more, but pick it up. You know, if you're walking, do some power walking, get it. You got to get out of breath a little bit because your body's going to do what you ask it to do. And if you never ask it to, you know, raise your heart rate and get it, it's just, it's just not going to happen. So, um, you know, my heart rate, my resting heart rate is, you know, in the high forties, right? Because I'm working out all the time. Um, so that's one is exercise. The other is I love being outdoors. I spend a lot of time outdoors. I happen to be a birder. Um, so I, and I'm always foot, doing you have a good pair of binoculars, huh? Yeah. I'm out there <laughs> with binoculars. I do think it's really important to have things that are, that are not expensive. You know, I think uh, you were talking about setting an example with our, you know, uh, we shouldn't, we should be able to set an example in a way that anybody can afford. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about running. You just mm -hmm. need a pair of sneakers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you don't need fancy out, a fancy outfit or whatever. You can get it if you want, but you don't need it. And uh, the same thing with, you know, birding. You can just have a cheap pair of binoculars and a bird book and you just go out. Mm. Uh, you don't even need a camera. It's nice to have one. Uh, so that's, you know, spending time outdoors is big for me. I also do music. Um, I play I play the saxophone. Oh, okay. And, yeah. Uh, I also Tenor play. Tenor or alto? I play the alto. Yeah, okay. You play? Um, I used to play the fluid and I used to play the piano. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, I will say that when I practice every day, it's great for me. Mm -hmm. I, I have to confess. I have to confess. I probably haven't practiced in about two months because mm -hmm. something, something happened during the winter, and I got to get back. But mm -hmm. I just have so many things to do. So, and then of course, eating well. You know, and my wife is a, my wife is a great cook, and so uh, I work really hard to eat well. Um, I mean, well, actually, I don't have to work that hard because she provides all this great food. So <laughs> it's not expensive, but it, it's not. I, you know, not everybody has a wife like mine. So <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And yeah. and like you said, over and over again, it's about having that support. So it's super key, you know, whether it's your spouse, your significant other family members or friends, or, you know, just, you know, strangers, you know, that have come together on your jump store at start and mm -hmm. found, found a common bond, right, a common interest and say like, wow, we're in this together, you know, let's be friends. And let's see how we can continue with this you know, after the fact. So um, Dr. Ted, I, I really appreciate you being on. Um, how can people reach out to you if they wanted to learn more about the Jumpstart, participate in it? Mm -hmm. Sure, thanks. So um, our website, our organization is called Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute. And our website is rochesterlifestylemedicine.org. You can just Google it, it'll pop right up. Uh, and um, Take a look at the, uh, the, the uh, obviously the homepage, but also if you're interested in the Jumpstart, there's uh, at the top of the you know, in the menu, there's a, uh, you can look up uh, the Jumpstart page and you can learn all about our Jumpstarts. You can go to our calendar and see uh, when, uh, when they're going to be. We do one every month, early in the month. It usually starts on a Saturday. Sometimes they start on a Sunday. Uh, and, uh, and it's usually the first or second weekend of the month when it starts. That's how I would start if you're a clinician uh, please take a look at our um, CME courses. Uh, you can actually get credit, CME credit for doing, uh, participating in the Jumpstart. There's a, we have what we call Jumpstarting Health, uh, which is 24 CMEs that includes 14 hours of uh, didactic lectures, which are pretty entertaining. There's music from my son, actually. Uh, and there's, um, and then you get 10 hours of credit for actually participating in the Jumpstart itself. And we take attendance to make sure you show up. Um, but then you'll end up with 24 credit hours if you do it that way. If you just want to do the uh, the uh, jump start, you can do that separately and get 10 credit hours for that, or you can do the 14 hours separately as well. Um, so yeah, take a look at that. Our website is you know kind of entertaining, uh, I think, and um, we just love to see people 
join us on these jumpstarts. It's so interesting. We we meet people from all over the world. In June, in January, we had over sixty people join us, including a woman from Greece. Mm. And uh, you know, we usually have somebody, a few people from Canada, and they're all you know most most of the states. So take a look at our website. All right. All right. And I'll make sure that, you know, that is on our show notes when Great. this episode publishes. So Dr. Ted, thank you so much yeah. um, for being here on the show. Um, please keep up, um, continue to do what you're doing. Um, it is so necessary. And I'm so glad that, you know, um, not just here, but, you know, that you're just a presence, you know, in the lifestyle world. I really, really greatly appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much, Colin. I feel the same about you. You're fabulous. Really. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you like this, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like this is a great benefit for someone else, please let them know as well. And until the next um, next time, the next episode, please say goodbye to Dr. Ted. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you like this, please like, follow, and subscribe. And please follow us for the latest updates for this season, season five. And if you feel that this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know. And please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and YouTube. And thank you so much again. And we will see you on the next one.